These aren't even legal in the United States. They're all Eurospec cars, so technically they don't even exist here. Are they some kind of Ford? Koenigsegg Agera R. Top speed, 270 miles an hour. But, do you know, are they some kind of Ferrari? <laughs> a Koenigsegg CC prototype was first publicized in 1996, while the full carbon fiber production prototype having the white was finally unveiled at the 2000 Paris Motor Show. The first customer took delivery of the red CCAS in 2002 at the Geneva Auto Show, and four more cars were built that year. In 2006, Koenigsegg introduced the CCX, a new model that was created in order to meet the worldwide regulations of four-road use. This meant the car had to go through extensive development in order to meet the latest, most stringent safety and emission standards that the world authorities demanded. So that means that this car was illegal and then boom, they came out and had to do it right to be a legit automaker. <laughs> From 2006 to 2010, only 29 were produced. Now, you got to think about that. That's not a lot, but these things going for a lot of money. And the first set, the illegal set, was with a 4.7 double overhead cam modular engine turbo. And then in between, I think let's say around 2008, I think they start making with it with a 4.8 double overhead cam modular engine. Now, you guys are sitting there with that. Now, it's only the modular block, not the whole engine, but you got to remember. Ford is able to produce different types of engines off of that block. Now, these guys make hypercars, not supercars. Ford GT is a supercar, not a hypercar. The technology that these guys are sharing probably helped Ford with the Coyote, with definitely with the Voodoo, and any other small technological things that they do within their engine combustion stuff. So they're sharing information. And we don't know if Ford put up some money for these guys to assist with their program. They use some of their old tech that they use to imply it in some of the Mustang stuff. Let's dig deeper a little bit. Improving the performance of the modular motor proved to be very tricky for Koenigsegg. Tune in for high power turned into an unreliable dirty engine that had to run on race gas. So they went with the first redesign resulted in something that was almost entirely new. Koenigsegg started by reinforcing the block, implementing a new crankcase, gas recirculation system, followed by all pistons connecting rods and camshafts. The lubrication system was converted to dry sump and the pistons got new oil cooling system. The main features of remaining from the Ford engine were the 90 degree angle and the piston bore spacing. So, Koenze ended up making so many changes to the block over time that they had to abandon Fords and started casting their own blocks. They added things like stiffening ribs and chose Griner Warhol in United Kingdom to make their new block out of aluminum. The engineering firm has extensive experience in everything from F1 engine castings to CGI blocks like Ford's EcoBoost V6. <laughs> so really what they did was they still use the Ford's geometry as far as the 90 degree block and the bore spacing. And I bet you they're using the same flat bank crank. I bet you that Voodoo engine is basically a Koenigsegg type deal. They're still using the block. They're just using space age material and they go into this firm that uses the V6 EcoBoost. Listen, they're trying to shy away from Ford, but it's the same thing. That's what I think. HP Owlman, yo, you know, me and you was on the same path. When you dropped the comment on the other video, I was like, dude, I'm making the video as we speak. It was crazy. But man, thank you for the information. It just made me want to do the video faster, man. And this is for you, brother. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for watching this video. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Later.
Then we don't need the camshaft drive here either. Uh, here, this is just, we don't need that. I mean, we have pneumatically operated actuators in here. So that also shortens the whole uh, front side of the engine and the FIAD, the, the drive, belt drive in the front of the engine. All in all, the engine is about 15 to 20 kilos lighter depending on specification, which is very big difference. Uh, so there's a lot of raw material uh, savings there. But most important, of course, is the fact that we get free control over the valves. So we can operate each valve individually and that really improves the combustion process drastically.